Yeah. Glad to have you. So for the listeners that have not clicked the link in your bio, do mm. not know it, squat about backtrack or anything. Yeah. Who is Eric? Man, I know. I feel like I need a shirt that just says link in bio. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. too. No, <laughs> the last 52 episodes. <laughs> yeah, man. No, but um, yeah, no, I'm Eric Brown Jr., man. I was uh, born here in San Diego when my dad was in the Navy. When, when I was a baby, my dad was getting out of the Navy. He moved me, my older sister, and my mom back to where he's from, which is in Northeast Ohio, mm. a place called Warren, Ohio. Really, 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 really small town. Mostly known for sports athletes, uh, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah. And um, I spent a good chunk of my childhood there. Man, that bike was loud. Man. <laughs> um, I spent a good chunk of my I spent a good chunk of my childhood there. Um, when my parents split up um, when I was about six, um, and then we lived there for a little bit longer. Um, when I was twelve, my mom said, "You know what? I'm divorced. I don't want to be in Ohio anymore because it's snowing." Mm -hmm. She moved me and my sister back here to San Diego. Yep. I went to, like the last couple of years of middle school and my first two years of high school here, and then I actually finished up my last two years in high school back in Warren, Ohio, in Northeast Ohio. Oh, why is that? Uh, so at the time, I was like young, sixteen, sixteen-year-old dude, and I think I thought I had, you know all the answers to everything. And I was like, you know, I'm just gonna go live with dad. You know, like, I'm tired of being here. <laughs> and um, yeah, man, it was crazy, man. I, I, I called my dad and, and uh, told him I started wanting to go. And he booked me a plane ticket and I flew out. And um, I thought I was gonna be all sun, sunshine and rainbows. And my dad, I'm like, oh, dad's cool. You know, me do whatever I want. Man, I got there. He put me straight to work on like oh, projects yeah. for the business and yeah. stuff for like around the house. And right. um, I felt like I had a full-time job except I wasn't getting paid for anything, yeah. you know? Um, but it was good. I mean, it taught me obviously discipline, but, um, and so I, then I, I graduated from high school out there, um, went to Kent state university, um, for one semester, I was bored out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, like I went to college for design work cause I had taught myself, um, Photoshop and a little bit of design work just on my own through YouTube while I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And I was in multimedia in high school. And YouTube things like Academy. That. Yo, YouTube University. Yeah, bef way before that. It was like <laughs> super, like the era of YouTube before ads. Uh, and like, if you can remember oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, what were those videos? Like salad fingers and <laughs> yo, shoes. and Creepy. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, you know, and that's why, you know, so I have friends and, you know, they're like, yo, is, is this girl too young for me? And I'm like, yo. Here's all you need to know. Does she remember ads on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> if the answer is no, man, she's, she's probably too young for you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but man, so I, you know, I taught myself uh, design work there. So I was like, I'm going to go to um, Kent State. They actually have one of the best programs for design in the country. And the program's called Visual Communication Design. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I came to find out while I was there was, man, like, once I had to do it for like a grade and I was like forced to do design work. Yeah, I got passion wasn't there no more. Yeah, man, like, you know, and I think that was like, you know, like young excuse of me being like, you know, like, oh, the passion's gone. Uh, <laughs> whatever it was, you know. Yeah. Um, so do you feel like you have all the answers though? Or like when you got an assignment, you're like, oh, I already know. Oh, no, man, or? absolutely not. I'm like, this is dumb. Like, you know, for, for me, again, it's just my, my, my opinion, but, you know, we had to do things by hand. So when we're doing design work, mm -hmm. You know, when you see a magazine cover right. today, you know, that was all thrown together digitally. But when you see a, a design cover from, let's say, Sports Illustrated from, you know, 72, and yeah. it's got some cool artwork, well, well, that was put together by hand. By like, hand, yeah. Like a photo was taken, and it was cut out with, like, scissors, and it was placed and stacked and stacked and stacked, and then it was photographed again, and there might have been hand, you know, so they really taught us to, they, to, to build, you know, your design work from hand with a pencil and, like... Very I'm like I'm work. I'm so glad you brought that up because a lot of people don't know that old cartoons like Looney Tunes stuff like that was literally drawn frame to frame to frame. So it, like one episode or one mm -hmm. little clip of Looney Tunes could have been thousands of drawings, you yeah. know, and people don't don't appreciate that they because don't. of CGI. Those paper books, like remember when they used to do it in class? Yeah. And Yo, even like old episodes of like South Park. That was that was construction yep, paper. That was construction yeah. paper cut and placed. You know, now yeah. they all they do it all digitally. But like, <laughs> you know, so I, I do think there was value in learning, you know, where that came from. I agree. Whether you're in design, whether you're in music, whether you're in, you know, whatever it may be. I agree. You should always learn the roots. Um, but for me, I was just like, Oh, I'm bored. So I I was like, I think I'm gonna just Joined the military. My dad was in the Navy, and um, I was like, it was always something that I wanted to do. Did you join the Navy, too, or did you choose another branch? No, I, I joined the Navy. So I was actually um, 
fourth generation Navy. So my great grandfather was in, my grandfather was in, and my dad was in, and then me. And Holy I'll, crap! So yeah. your your great grandfather, what wars did he serve in? So he actually didn't serve in any wars. He actually he wasn't drafted. He was enlisted. Um, oh. So he chose to go. He yeah, didn't yeah, really yeah. have many options. But still, at that point in time, for blacks, you know, all he could be in the military in, in the Navy at the time was a cook. Uh. So he was a cook. Um, my grandfather was kind of a knucklehead. He uh, wasn't drafted either. He enlisted. And um, f- from the story, how it, how it was told to me was my grandfather actually got kicked out of uh, the Navy for just craziness. My grandfather used to tell me these crazy stories that he used to hitchhike home to see my grandmother on weekends from boot camp. <laughs> like, like, like legit. Like, you can't do that. No, like, no, no. And then... Um, Uber. Um, apparently, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apparently, the final straw for him was um, there's something in, in the Navy called uh, missing ship's movement. And that's uh-huh. when the ship is scheduled to leave and you as a sailor, you're not on the ship. And if you miss, you know, the time, it's like a really, really, really big deal. Anyway, some crazy story. He was picked up by the Spanish Navy and then the Spanish Navy had him in custody because they were an ally <laughs> and then they actually um, came out to sea and they like put him in this basket and they shoveled <laughs> him, him in a basket. Across, you know, they put him in his basket and they shoveled him across, um, you know, Take from, him back. from ship to ship. And then when he got on the ship, put him in the brig, obviously. But then when they got back to the U.S., they're like, hey, man, have a good one. <laughs> like, so he was, he was just discharged like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. But, um, what a thug. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and then um, my dad, um, my dad <laughs> served. My dad served 24 years. Um, really, really long career. And then um, I, you know, then, then me, I, I was the funny story is I was the first one to um, never go out to sea. So I was never stationed on a ship. It's kind of funny just being a sailor. Are you in the Navy and not go? Yeah, nothing. man. Because um, my job was, um, so I was a master at arms, which is a fancy way to say a policeman, mm-hmm. a law enforcement. But I was a canine handler. So I trained police dogs. Oh, in the no Navy. way. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why'd so, you stop doing that? Well, when I got out of the Navy, um, I knew I didn't want to be like a lifer. I knew I didn't want to do 20 years mm-hmm. in the military. I wanted to serve because of what it meant to me from my, you know, my, my family serving. Mm-hmm. Um, also, it was like, look, if I ever do decide to go back to college, it'll be nice to GI have that bill. money, use my GI Bill, yeah. and, and give me the options. You know? So for me, you know, the return on investment for my time was like, this, this works out for me. Not only are they going to pay for my school, but then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a housing allowance. Yeah, this works out. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but... You know, being a dog handler, um, it's kind of really, really, really rough on your body. You know, we're training. Not only are there bomb and drug sniffing dogs, um, but all of the dogs, at least during that time, were also attack trained dogs? for attack dogs. Yeah, so, like, we're, we're training attack dogs, and you know, again, <laughs> did you ever like wear the bodysuit and like get every just wrecked every by day. a dog every day? Damn, you were that guy. I mean, we all so you, <laughs> we all took so turns. You, you, all, you all train your you all train your dogs. <laughs> I can see Eric. Hey, can, can, we, can we trade? Uh, hey, this is not what I signed up <laughs> for. <laughs> it's your turn, bro. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, you know when you're in you know in the in the military and you're working a dog, you know you have a you have a kennel and it's, so it's every dog handler has one dog, mm-hmm. and you have to train each other's dog. So I would never have my dog bite me in the suit because that just doesn't make sense. Right? That doesn't make sense. So like if you were a handler. You would be in the suit, and you would be, you know, working my dog, and we'd be working on different things and, and things like that. And so you're always in the suit every day, training somebody else's dog, Got trying it. to level them up and get them better. Got and, it. So you guys all are like the bait for each other's dogs. Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I just just like the sidebar because like <laughs> this really interests me. Yeah. What happens like when you train the dog? Because obviously they listen to you, like you are alpha. Mm-hmm. So like. Do you just like tell the dog, hey, that guy's alpha now, and then the dog listens to that guy, or are they just like on cues, cues, cues? Like you mean like when um like what do you mean? Like so I have were, a dog. You were like <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> hypothetically, if I was to have a dog, no <laughs> um <laughs> no, so like you you were a trainer, right? And like you would get these dogs and then you would make them into working dogs. Well, yeah, so okay, so I was a dog handler, but you know, we're training every single day. Yeah. And so so yeah, let me back up. So I'm a, a police police officer, but I also have you know a dog with me yeah. to help me do my job. Which is job. awesome. I think everybody should. But with that, you know, there's so much of your job is is training. I mean, I probably spent eighty percent of my day training either my dog or other people's dogs, and probably about twenty percent of my day actually Policing. doing law, law enforcement work. Yeah. Which is nice. I'm not sitting around writing tickets all day. Mm-hmm. I'm the guy that they call when you know there's either you know, a scare or unintended bag or, you know, we've got somebody who's got a, you know, a temper, you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, 
no to your to your to your question when you're you're training it, what's tough in the military is unlike in the civilian world you know you don't get your dog and you have that dog forever right the military looks at the canines as equipment yeah so they're specific to the base so sailors and airmen and mm-hmm. soldiers and marines they all move so when you move and you're a dog handler, you say goodbye to that dog that and you sucks. and you get a new dog. That sucks, man. And um, you know the best dog teams are the dog teams that have good relationships built, and yeah. that takes time. And so if you have time to put in, that means spending all day with your dog and building a relationship for months before you even give it a command to even sit. Right? Yeah. Um, because how would you feel if you just met somebody? And they started telling you what to do. Like, Yo, yeah, you'd be like, oh, get on. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> and so, but when you're talking about a job as serious as law enforcement, you know, that, that job may be, that dog may be the reason why you get to go home. Right. And so you really have to have a that's good relationship. Partner. Like, yeah, that's your right hand. That like sounds like the best job in the military so far that I've heard. Yeah, until <laughs> you have to say goodbye. Yeah. Because that, that would hurt. Who was yeah, your favorite dog ever? Um, so I worked two dogs during the course of my career. My first dog was Pharaoh, and he was a drug detection dog and patrol, so attack dog. Um, and then my second dog was Pedo. Pharaoh was like a big teddy bear, man. Like He like, <laughs> loved everybody. Like He was one of the best drug-sniffing dogs, but he would also also just be like, hey. He sniffed a little bit too many drugs. You know, especially if a girl came in the room, he was, you know, he knew. Oh. Like, if a female would come in the room, he would just go straight to him. He'd be like, ah, hey, what's up? Yeah. And um, he was awesome. When, when he retired, I was able to actually adopt him. And I had him for like his last few remaining years before he oh, you know, passed away. Dope. What? Damn. Yeah. I just pulled off. Oh, that's me. Well, that's so, awesome. So you can actually go on right now to the Air, the Air Force. They actually, that department, they control all of the military working dogs in all of the, uh, the armed service branches. You go onto their website. I can't remember the URL, but if you just Google it, it'll mm-hmm. pop up. When dogs retire Link from the, the military, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when dogs retire from the military, um, you can actually just go on and see what dogs they have available. So, but when dogs retire, we always give priority to their prior handlers. Yeah. Right? Of so, like you know, you'd be like, "Hey, your dog's retiring. Do you want? Are you able to adopt him?" Most, you know, most of the time, it's like, "Yeah, that was my partner." <laughs> if not, then they try to get it to another somebody handler close. because some of these dogs, you know, are again are patrol dog, and you just don't want to give them to somebody who. You know, it has no dog training or dog working experience, you know, yeah. because the, the their training starts are. when they're one. And some of these dogs are 10 when they retire. And they've done nothing for the last decade except work, you know. <laughs> so when they hear certain words or they see certain things and they, you know, get back <gasps> into that mode of like, oh, man, are, are we working? You know, I can I can <laughs> only imagine if I took one of those dogs home and then I'm like cooking in the kitchen, like cutting celery and, and they see a knife and I just get <laughs> like just. <laughs> Taken out, you know, like I mean, yeah, we 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 yeah, we, that we, taking them to a park and then seeing other people around and how they interact and yeah, man, that probably suspect be, packages or something like yeah, and, and then Peto was my second dog and um he was he was an amazing dog. I mean, this dog loved to work. He'd work with if it was a robot holding mm-hmm. a leash, but um <laughs> he was he did two tours in Afghanistan and he found multiple buried IEDs and he was just a badass man and, That's dope. and um but yeah but when I when I again when I got when I got out it was because like I don't I didn't want to make the military do you know what happened to Pedo though Pedo actually <laughs> Pedo actually died he actually got cancer like a year after I got out of the navy he actually died like a year after Pedo or I'm sorry Pharaoh died my first dog god damn what a rough couple of years for you I'm sorry yeah no it was rough because Pharaoh died on my birthday which, oh, what oh. yo I, it was like Long story short, on my birthday back in like 2015 or something like that, 2016, 2015, he had been sick for the past few days and he began to bloat. And I was like, yeah, we got to go to the vet. You know, I'm at the vet and it was just, we could do a surgery that could possibly make him more comfortable. But other, long story short, he was going to die. Yeah. And um, so, I was, you know, I was like, I'm not going to make this dog suffer anymore. But I got him. He's sitting on the... He's sitting on the shelf at the apartment. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> wait, wait. Did he, did he, was he cremated or stuffed? Because yeah, no, I got go him either way. Taxidermy. Just no. <laughs> <laughs> I got him cremated. So yeah, he's uh, he's with me, man. But um, yeah, man. So then I got out. I got out the navy, man. Four years, five years. I did four. Four. I did four. So um, navy, all that stuff, right? That is kind of complete opposite to what you are known for now. 